Not sure which GPU pairs best with your Ryzen 5 7600X? The Ryzen 5 7600X is a great option for moving to the new AM5 platform. It's a really fast 6-core, 12-threaded CPU with enough gaming horsepower to keep up with the extremely popular Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and Core i9 12900K. In this video, we have two great GPUs that offer the best price to performance than anything else in their price category to pair with the 7600X. Trust me, you'll want to stay with me till the end to make a wise and informed choice. Price information and all GPUs mentioned in the video are available in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. So let's get started. Best Budget GPU for the Ryzen 5 7600X XFX Speedster Swift 309 AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT The RX 6700 XT has quickly become a legendary GPU thanks to its incredible 1440p gaming performance and budget-friendly price. The XFX Speedster Swift 309 Radeon RX 6700 XT is perfect for those who need something powerful without breaking the bank. Starting with the design of the card, it has a very simple dual-slot design with three fans. It's slim and will fit in any case very easily, but since it's a triple fan card, it is quite long, so make sure there is plenty of room in your PC case. The backplate is made of metal, while the rest of the fan shroud is made of hard plastic that's trying to replicate the look and feel of metal. I don't think the build quality is particularly that impressive, but the cooling performance is excellent. The fans barely spin, so they don't make a lot of noise, and even then, they easily keep the GPU temperature at around 72 degrees Celsius during gaming. In terms of performance, the 6700 XT can easily run demanding AAA games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Spider-Man Remastered, and Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p Ultra settings at 60fps. Only the most demanding games like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 will run at 1440p Ultra settings at around 40fps, so you'll need FSR to increase the frame rate to 60fps. Any eSports title will have no issue running at 200 plus FPS at medium or high settings in games like Counter-Strike 2, Dota 2, League of Legends, Valorant, and Rainbow Six Siege. Moving on, the RX 6700 XT is paired with a fast kit of 12GB GDDR6 VRAM over a 192-bit bus with a massive 96MB L3 cache. Overall, it's an excellent GPU with almost no complaints and an easy pairing with an affordable CPU like the Ryzen 5 7600X. AMD's biggest competition is, ironically, AMD themselves. The best GPU that can rival the RX 6700 XT is the RX 7600 XT, which is another fantastic 1440p gaming GPU. However, there is a major problem. The RX 7600 XT is just an RX 7600 with 16GB VRAM and a higher price tag. If it had a performance improvement, like the RX 6600 XT has over the RX 6600, then it would have been very easy for me to recommend that over the RX 6700 XT. The RX 7600 XT falls short of the 6700 XT, especially in 1440p and the extra 4GB VRAM buffer isn't enough of a justification for a nearly 25% increase in price. As far as NVIDIA and Intel are concerned, they also have plenty of options that are either too expensive or lack attractive features. I would have loved to recommend the RTX 4060 Ti had it been a much cheaper GPU. It offers decent performance, close to the 6700 XT, and comes in 8 and 16GB variants. Sadly, the 8GB version falls flat when the GPU starts running out of VRAM at 1440p, and the 16GB variant is far too expensive to even consider. 
At the end of the day, the RX 6700 XT is quite unmatched when it comes to price to performance. At just under $300, it's the most enticing option for anyone looking to play games at 1440p on a tight budget. Ratings PCB design, 8.5 out of 10. Performance, 9 out of 10. Aesthetics and cooler design, 8.5 out of 10. Value for money, 9.5 out of 10. For an overall rating of 9 out of 10. Best value GPU for the Ryzen 5 7600X, Gigabyte Radeon RX 7900 GRE Gaming OC. For the best value GPU, I wanted something that packs the heaviest punches possible at a price that makes sense. I had my eyes on an RX 7800 XT, but changed my mind after seeing the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7900 GRE Gaming OC. It's a beefy card, and you'll need three slots to fit it inside your case. Luckily, compared to all the other 7900 GREs, it is slightly more compact and not too tall either. The backplate is a solid piece of metal and is virtually indestructible. It also helps to dissipate some of the heat away from the VRMs on the back of the PCB. However, the fan shroud is made of plastic and can feel cheap at times. This is a dual BIOS card as well, so you can run it either in silent or OC mode without any effort. The rest of the design is very simple with some accenting to make the design more interesting. But other than that, it doesn't draw any attention towards itself, except for the RGB logo on the side. Performance-wise, the RX 7900 GRE definitely has room for playing games at 4K. However, the experience will not be perfectly locked at 60 FPS all the time. For that, you'll definitely need to enable FSR quality mode to upscale the resolution and get faster frames. For example, in Cyberpunk 2077, you'll only get around 50 FPS at 4K high settings, but with FSR turned on, the frame rates jump to around 80 FPS. You can definitely dabble more in 4K, but this GPU truly shines in 1440p, and games like Cyberpunk 2077 run at almost 90 FPS. The 7900 GRE also has good ray tracing capabilities compared to other Radeon GPUs. Cyberpunk 2077 runs at a cool 60 FPS with ray tracing at 1440p high settings. The GPU is not bound by the Ryzen 5 7600X at all, so both of these are a great pairing for one another. In terms of competition, AMD is AMD's competition. Given the price gap is so little, it's difficult to recommend the RX 7800 XT over the RX 7900 GRE. The RX 7900 GRE beats the RX 7800 XT by as little as 5 FPS and as much as 20 FPS, depending on the game. After the release of the 7900 GRE, NVIDIA released the RTX 4070 Super as a direct competitor. Both of these GPUs trade blows with each other, with the RTX 4070 Super having a comfortable win in ray tracing, while the RX 7900 GRE outperforming in rasterization. For gamers and video editors, the RX 7900 GRE is a no-brainer, and I have almost never been able to recommend the 4070 Super, given its lack of VRAM and high price tag. You get acceptable ray tracing performance and AV1 encoding at a lower price tag, along with 16GB of VRAM instead of 12GB. One common criticism is that the 18 gigabits per second memory on the RX 7900 GRE is slightly slower than the 19.5 gigabits per second memory on the RX 7800 XT, but this doesn't affect the 7900 GRE's performance lead. On top of that, you can easily overclock the memory to 19.5 gigabits to make up for it and gain an even bigger lead over the 7800 XT without increasing power draw. 
Of course, this is a little bit of work in the AMD driver, but not much of a complaint. My biggest complaint with the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7900 GRE Gaming OC is that it's quite power-hungry. During gaming, it can consume up to 290 watts of power, which can be concerning. The good thing is that the cooler is really well built, and the GPU temperatures stay under 70 degrees Celsius at all times, even under intense workloads. It stays quiet without suffering from thermal throttling, while the fans produce only about 40 decibels of noise, which is acceptable but audible. All in all, the RX 7900 GRE is one of the best value GPUs and can deliver more frames per dollar than any of the competition. At just over $500, it's quickly replacing AMD's own RX 7800 XT as the value champion by delivering great experiences even at 4K. On top of being a great gaming GPU, the Gigabyte RX 7900 GRE is also perfect for anyone looking for a powerful workstation GPU with plenty of VRAM without breaking the bank. Ratings. PCB design, 8.5 out of 10. Performance, 9 out of 10. Aesthetics and cooler design, 8.5 out of 10. Value for money, 9.5 out of 10. For an overall rating of 9 out of 10. So, what do you think? Which of these is the best graphics card for you? Or do you think another GPU is better for the Ryzen 5 7600X? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.